I'm sharing all my secrets today, people. You are welcome. We've done quite a bit of traveling over the past year. Mexico, Napa, Charleston, Hawaii, Vegas, Santa Barbara, and every hotel we stayed at was a five-star hotel, with the exception of Napa. But that was the trip we got engaged, so that was the most magical of them all. Anyway, we did not pay top dollar for any of these experiences. In fact, we saved between 20% all the way up to 50%. And no, I do not get influencer perks. I'm not that popular. And so today, I want to share with you my five star hotel hacks. If this is important to you, maybe you don't give a crap about luxury hotels, that's okay. You might just wanna skip over this video. This video is for you if you are like me and you're drawn to luxurious accommodations and are willing to splurge for that aesthetically pleasing hotel, among other things. Number one, affirm your desire. Our brains create our reality based on what we believe is possible. So if you think that that a five-star experience isn't available to you for whatever reason, then your brain will never seek the path and solutions to get you there. You've got to be bold and claim, this is what I want. This is where I want to go. This is where I want to stay. And believe with full certainty that it's possible, even without little to no evidence to prove it's feasible. In other words, even if it doesn't appear to be within your budget on first glance. So you've got to be bold and claim, this is what I want, this is where we're going to go, this is where we're going to stay. For example, when I was planning our next vacation and figuring out where we wanted to go, I narrowed my focus to Hawaii. And as I was looking at all the hotels, I was magnetically drawn to the Four Seasons in Maui, which yes, is the White Lotus Hotel. I had never seen the show. I was just in awe while looking at images online. I saw that rooms started at $1,400 a night. My brain by default was like, no way. Way too expensive, not in your budget, you can't afford that, it ain't gonna happen. But when I was looking at pictures and the restaurants in the hotel, my inner being was dancing with joy. Again, I felt this magnetic inner pull toward it. And so I just decided right there, this is where we're going to stay in Maui. No question in my mind, it's happening. I have no idea how, because we weren't willing to pay $1,400 a night, but some way, somehow, it was going to happen at some point. It's the only option. And so that's the level of declaration you wanna lead with and the level of certainty you want to feel when you've narrowed your focus and named the experience you desire. Forget about the how. The how is none of your business. If something is singing to your soul, it is 100% possible. But it starts with you believing it is. Number two, check rates and gather info when it feels fun. So in my Maui example, I wasn't graspy and like desperately checking for rates to drop every day. I only revisited the idea of that particular trip when it felt fun to do so. When I had the inner urge to like poke around. And then one day I got an impulse to check the rates again. Out of the blue. And I saw a week open up that offered a nightly rate of $750. Which was literally 50% off. And I got this overwhelming feeling of yes and we booked it. And then that deal, you guys, vanished like a poof of smoke. I don't even know how that transpired, but it did. Now, I will say that our room was beautiful. It was one of the largest standard rooms we've ever stayed in, but it was in like the way back of the hotel. We laughed every time we walked to our room, but really we were laughing all the way to the bank because we knew we were paying 50% less than all the other guests. And we weren't in the room anyway right like we were out enjoying the pools and the beach and the restaurants etc but nonetheless it was pretty funny number three off-season pricing we visited Hawaii late November early December which is considered their off-season hence another reason for the flash sale I guess you could say we felt good about that and we were willing to take our chances weather-wise for a 50% discount on a dream hotel luckily we only had one rainy day that week so that's something to consider great deals in the off season and you may still get great weather 
or not. That's where you're gonna gamble. Number four, check offers. Most hotels have an offer tab somewhere on their website. Check that out when you're gathering information and before booking any trip. Offers like buy two nights and get the third free, daily breakfast credits. Nine out of 10 times, there is a fabulous perk to be had here. I can't even remember the last time I booked a hotel without using an offer. We did the buy two, get one night free in Cabo, plus we did extra add-ons at checkout. So like we bought a $200 food and beverage credit for $150. So you save $50 instantly. Number five, flexible days. Both Nathan and I are self-employed, so we do have the luxury of traveling whenever. If you have the freedom to travel from Sunday to Thursday, take advantage. You will save on average 30% off of your trip between both the hotel and the flights if you're flying. Not only will you save money, but you have a much higher chance of getting free upgrades and earlier check-ins. We went to Cabo midweek and because the inventory was so high, they offered us a free upgrade from the get-go. We went from a garden view to an ocean view free of charge. And we were able to check into our room earlier than the usual 3 p.m. check-in, so we got what felt like a full extra day in Mexico. I like to get to any hotel hours in advance on purpose. I'll plan our flights accordingly because eight out of 10 times they have a room ready for you way earlier than the official check-in time. Number six, throw in a crash pad when it makes sense. In other words, when we visited Charleston, we got in pretty late. I think it was 9 p.m. with the time difference. And so I was like, it doesn't make sense to pay for our five-star hotel for that night just to sleep. So we ended up staying at a cheap two or three-star hotel near the airport for the night. It was like $100 or something. The next morning, we went to our hotel early, like 11 a.m., way before the 3 p.m. check-in, and lo and behold, a room was was ready for us. Now, side note, we prefer a shorter five-star experience stay versus a longer three-star experience stay. For example, in Charleston, we opted for their biggest suite, which was, oh my gosh, the most fabulous room I've ever stayed in. I still think about that room to this day. It actually averaged about the same cost it would have if we would have stayed a week in a standard room. This is just a personal preference. We tend to feel pretty full and satisfied after just a couple of days of vacationing, depending on the location, of course. I'm not staying three nights in Europe, right? And bonus, we actually got an extra night free of charge in Charleston because our flight was canceled. So I think we finally got our flight situation figured out. And our Chase credit cards paid for an extra night of hotel and food. I am like a five-star manifesting magnet, which brings me to my next tip, a good credit card. I had such a lame credit card for years and Nathan was like, we need to get you a new card. Thank God I switched over. I have the Chase Preferred, he has the Chase Reserve, and every flight since the beginning of 2021, or whenever I got this card, has been paid for with points. No cash out of pocket. Plus, the trip delay reimbursement has saved me over $1,000 from two canceled flights. My flight from LAX was delayed, so I missed my connecting flight. So I'm in Detroit. Both my hotel and food were 100% reimbursed. One of these canceled flights being in Charleston at a five star. We spent an entire extra day and night free of charge. So be knowledgeable about the benefits of your credit card and utilize them or shop around for a better card. Number eight, money saving apps. I have an app called Capital where I set different goals and it automatically pulls from my bank account until I've reached the goal I set. You set up different, what they call rules. For example, when you use your debit card, it will round up and send to your goal. Or you can set it to transfer $5 every day or $1 every day, etc. It's all customizable and you literally set it and forget it. It's fabulous. You're like, oh yeah, I have this secret account over here with $1,000 in it for fall travels. So if you want, you can sign up for Capital with my code and we both get $25. Bonus, I'll go ahead and put the code under this video as well. It is hands down my favorite app for saving, especially for travel. Number nine, connections and travel agencies. 
Do you know somebody who can hook you up? We're planning our wedding right now in Santa Barbara and one of my favorite five-star hotels on earth is a whopping $2,200 a night, starting at $2,200 a night. But I'm like, this is our wedding. This is happening. I don't know how, but we're doing this. And Nathan actually used to work with a guy whose family owns the hotel. You never know who you know. He reached out very kindly and we received a very kind response back but unfortunately no family and friends discount came of it but I kept the faith and that's when his mom actually got us in touch with a travel agency that offered some extra benefits that made us feel really good about splurging we took advantage of the hotels buy two nights get the third night free offer and because we booked through an agency we're also getting daily breakfast credits a total value I think of $180 plus spa credit possible room upgrade and late checkout based on availability and the fee for the agency was only ten dollars so there are travel agencies out there just a google search away that offer exclusive complimentary perks when booking directly through them and lastly number 10 resort days and passes even with all my kick-ass hacks you guys there are still times that I cannot wiggle my way around the cost enough to justify spending crazy amounts of dollars on a hotel. This was the case in Napa. I had found us another five-star resort, but the rates were around, I think, $2,000 a night. And I'm like, it's Napa. I'd rather splurge on wine tours and hiring a driver for the time that we're there. But... The workaround to this is to visit five-star hotels during your stay. So you stay at a less expensive hotel, but you visit the fancy hotels. You can book a spa treatment, reserve a nice lunch, a fancy dinner, which is what we did, and you still get a mini experience of being a guest. There's even something called Resort Pass. It's where you can purchase a day pass to participating hotels and use their pool, poolside service, and a amenities without being a paying guest at the resort. These day passes range from as little as $20 to $100 a day. It is a great way to get that five-star experience without the five-star price tag. Hopefully these tips were helpful. My intention is to inspire you to believe in possibility today and create a lifestyle you love. To stop waiting for some future moment to then believe and plan and take that dream vacation. Like this video down below, leave a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.